Today we'll be talking about how to use cursor-based pagination and auto-pagination with Stripe's APIs. Before we dive into what this looks like in each of our client libraries, I'll go over some of the basics of making list requests. All top-level API resources have support for bulk fetches through list methods that split up the results into chunks, known as pages. These API methods will return results one page at a time in reverse chronological order, and the requests all share a common structure. They can take in three optional parameters, limit, starting after, and ending before. The limit parameter is used to specify how many objects you want to fetch per call. The starting after and ending before parameters take in an existing object ID and are mutually exclusive. Only one of the two can be used in a single request. Setting the starting after parameter returns the next page of results that come after the passed in object. Setting the ending before parameter returns the previous page of results that comes before the specified object. As we go through each language, you'll see examples of how these parameters are used with cursor-based pagination and how that compares to auto-pagination. I've set up a file called pagination.go with the Stripe Go library installed and my API key already set. Let's start out by listing our customer IDs. All right, I'll iterate through the objects returned by Stripe, add their IDs to a slice, and then print them out at the end. If you look at the response, you can see that we get back 150 customers. Usually, not specifying limit for a list request will return at most 10 objects, since that is the default limit. However, Go behaves a bit differently because auto-pagination is enabled by default. This means that the code I've just written is cycling through all of my customers and printing a complete list of their IDs. If you want to disable auto-pagination, you can do so by setting the single option to true in any list param struct. You can see that now I only get back 10 customer IDs. If I wanted to get back more or less, I could set limit to any value between one and 100. If you want to fetch your customers page by page, you can grab the next page of customers by using starting after. When you pass the ID of the last customer into starting after, you get the next 20 customers that come after this customer. As you can see, this gives us back a different set of customers from our initial request. 
You can use these concepts to iterate through all your customers with cursor-based pagination. As you could see in the examples, using auto pagination allows you to easily handle bulk fetches with code that's clean and easy to understand. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or run into any issues, let us know.